friends owe this towel awkward hey friends it's Therese and welcome back to my channel today as you guys can tell is a reading vlog the first reading vlog of oh my goodness I just it's fine we're, we're trying to dry curly hair R right here it's the first reading vlog of 2021 as you guys can tell by the title it is about chain of iron which is releasing today so happy book birthday to chain of iron very excited I do not have the book on me just quite yet I'm getting it after work hence why I took a shower on my lunch break the plan is for tonight after work is to run to Target get some litter some more tabs and some hair gel because my waves desperately need hair gel then we go to Barnes & Noble pick up Gathering of Shadows and Chain of Iron and then pick up Aristotle and Dante Seek Fi Discover the Secrets of the Universe for my parents because I want a uh, giveaway from Andre so thank you to Andre but yeah, right now it's my lunch break. I decided to take a shower first because my hair retains so much water and the weather outside is so unpredictable that I do not know if it'll be warm enough for my hair to just air dry. So I'm going to go pack for product in my hair, dry my hair, and eat lunch, and I'll catch up with you guys when it is time to go buy Chain of Iron. My hair is dry and significantly frizz frizzier. We're working on it. It's a process. Hey everyone, it is now like almost 11.30. Yeah, 11.30. I just got back from my boyfriend's place and I did get a chance to get some reading in. Let me just adjust that lighting. I did get a chance to read. I'm only like 30-ish pages, maybe 60 pages. Oh, it's only 11.15. Just kidding. Like 30-ish pages, so barely past like the first three chapters. I feel like there was more than that. Probably 60 pages, I'm not gonna lie. Before I get into like the spoiler part, because hint hint, this vlog is gonna be spoilery. I don't know if I guys told you, in the, but I accidentally, I accidentally put my contacts in wrong. And I don't know how I did it. I think I was just so excited that my brain somehow put the right ones in my left one and the left ones in my right one. And I didn't realize it until I got to my parents' house to pick up Aristotle. That I was like, I'm kind of seeing a weird, like almost like unfocusable vision. So I like went in the bathroom and flipped them. And that helped and I wasn't sure how I did it but um, I went to put my contacts away and the things on it instead of saying L to R it says R to L <laughs> which shouldn't be the case hi Nico but I am really enjoying it so far it's like I've already read like the first two chapters from Cassie's like little hint like little sneak peek that she gave us a couple months ago and I didn't realize that until I was reading but like it was wonderful. I loved the recap. Oh, recap. I loved... I feel like this is like one of her better casts of characters. I'm not saying because I love all the casts of characters that I have read from her thus far. It's one of her better ones, I think. I think they've all kind of grown and shaped over the... over like the past few books. The writing style feels different. I can't... I can't really place it, but it feels different. I talked about it a little bit with Andrea and she said that the vibes were different, but... Something about the writing style just feels refined. Like you can tell she's definitely like made a change and there's going to be a bit more of like a, I don't want to say a, trans ooh, a transformation, but a shift to like her adult writing that she'll be doing or like adult genre writing that she'll be doing in the future. You can definitely like feel it. Um, as for the writing itself, like I said, this vlog is going to be spoilery, so apologies, but I'll try to keep some spoilers kind of vague, at least in the beginning and whatnot but I forgot about the backwards mermaid I forgot about the backwards mermaid and I, I was reading the book next to my boyfriend who is currently playing spider-man on his ps5 and I was just kind of laughing hysterically and he was just kind of looking at me and I had explained to him what was the situation and he was like got into like this weird philosophical debate about like would you sleep with like um, an actual mermaid or would you just sleep with the backwards mermaid and it was just a weird situation and i started reading him what do you call it passages of describing the backwards mermaid and he just kind of looked at me and was like i don't like what you're doing i need you to stop that was my night let me just double check to see what page i'm actually on i know i ended on chapter three like actually chapter three let's put a bookmark in here but i have read three chapters technically four but yeah okay it's pay i am basically um 60 pages in so yeah started tabbing as well i had to buy more tabs from target so 
fun times. But yeah, that's basically it for my updates. Like I said, I'm not that far in. So, oh, 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 oh before I forget. So in the first book, we had end pages from Cassandra Jean, I believe. And in this book, we don't get fancy end pages, but we do get silhouettes that are kind of peppered throughout the book, according to Andrew. I saw one while I was flipping through earlier. There we go. Yeah. Like silhouettes of the characters, which I'm excited to see because, like, I love them to tears. So, super excited. But now I'm just going to probably fall asleep reading Taste of Blood Vine, which I'm buttering with um, TB. He's already finished it. I have not. So, I have quite a bit of catching up to do. And as usual, I'm probably going to knock out reading it. And my battery's almost dead. So. to put my plate away in the sink and guess who decided to sit in my spot naughty very naughty goodness i guess i have to move oh just kidding a mild update not even an update on reading but a mild update so for all of you guys who do not know i have two closets one is in the, one's a mini hallway closet and the one's in my current closet because my tv i don't know if you could see it but my tv is right here so we kind of had to and somehow, somehow, this little demonic cat got into the hallway closet and somehow took down my makeshift setup, which involved a tension rod. Like, you know, just one of those, like, cool little curtain things. And I have tried a bajillion times to get everything... to get everything back up and fixed, but for some reason it just keeps falling. So I have allowed my feminism to leave my body and I have contacted my boyfriend and he's coming over to the gym to see if he can fix this mess. So I am, I was supposed to edit a video tonight, get some reading done and some writing, but guess what's not gonna happen just quite yet. All of that. I'm gonna try it in a little bit and I'll update you guys probably at the end of the day what happened and the scenario with the book that I'm reading. So, I'll update you guys, probably when I'm a little more fed, because my roommate saw my struggle and was like, I'm getting canes, do you want any? So. Alrighty, it's now about like 10 p.m. Update. The feminism left my body, my boyfriend came over, fixed the problem very easily, painfully easily. Explained what I was doing wrong in the sweetest way possible, and then he left, because he literally had just come from the gym. <laughs> 
bless this boy. But right now, I'm waiting for my video to finish exporting. It's my TBR. I'm gonna upload that tonight and schedule it for tomorrow and have the thumbnail up. And then I'm gonna go to bed reading Chain of Iron. Um, I am going back to the office for a couple weeks starting tomorrow. So I do have to be up kind of early to fix this this face and make her look presentable. So I will have some interesting like content in terms of like where I'm reading. In terms of the story, I am in the, I just at the beginning of chapter 5, which is like 104 pages in. I just got to the part after the wedding. I don't know. Alistair, you guys, Alistair just hurts me because he's literally the definition of like oop. And his boyfriend texting. He's the definition of just like hurt people hurt people. And it's not even so much like he wanted people to hurt because he was hurting. He want he was just hurting and the only way to kind of protect himself was to be the bully, which he explained, which makes me so sad. And so the fact that like he's going through this heartbreak with Charles and, and Thomas, I, I just, I feel for him so badly. I just want to give him such a big hug because like at the end of Chain of Gold, he like had this hope that things were going to start going better and like started accepting his like darker hair with his darker features. And then everything goes to shit, and I'm just like, oh no. Then there's the fact that Elias, Cordelia's dad, comes back, and he's like, he's he's a drunk, he says he's doing better, trying to do better, and then he just kind of doesn't. He kind of makes a spectacle at the wedding, and it gets super drunk and wasted to the point where Alistair is very clearly triggered and upset. And I just protect the Carstairs family. And then I have a theory about who's going to be in the next cover. I have a feeling it's going to be Grace. Just because we've seen Chain of Gold has Cordelia with, with Cortana. Chain of Iron has Lucy with Jesse's Locket. And I have a feeling Chain of um, Thorns is going to be Grace with her Gracelet. Speaking of Grace, I still hate the bitch. I, I desperately hate her. I But the chapter where she we talked about, like, what was it, like, six years or three years? Between when she was, like, first adopted to when she and Jesse met and, like, Jesse dying happened it was just heartbreaking like she just had no friends she was completely isolated she was told these people were terrible people despite the fact that now that she's older she's learning the exact opposite and it's just heartbreaking for her to like have literally lost everything and to have to just kind of sit there and like continue this plan for the sake of the person who raised you so you can protect the person who kept you safe and made you feel cared for and loved all these years but i still hate her i feel like she has some redeeming qualities but then you go back at it and it's just like what can we redeem about you i'm a little torn on that but yeah i'm gonna read a little bit more as this video is exporting and then as it's uploading i'm gonna work on the thumbnail get everything done and pretty for tomorrow and then tomorrow i'm gonna be reading this during my lunch break and then when I get home, I'm going to have to make dinner and do the CC for this video, which thankfully it's a very short video. It's a rare short Therese video. <laughs> and then I will update you guys either tonight or tomorrow on my lunch break as to what is going on. And lesson of the day. Remember, don't ever wonder what you can do for the patriarchy. Ask the patriarchy what it can do for you. And if that requires your feminism leaving its body for like an hour so you can figure out how to do something you didn't know how to do while a big strong man does it, you let the patriarchy do it. You can't rule the world if you don't know how to do things and sometimes you have to just let things happen so you can kick the person out and do things yourself. Granted, I, I my boyfriend is the sweetest. I love him. Um, we'll not be kicking him out anytime soon. Not that we live together, but in the metaphorical sense. We'll not be kicking him out anytime soon. But you know, this is good knowledge to have in case he is not available for, for me to call. It's getting to be almost 11. I think I'm on chapter six and a half, seven. I say six and a half because some of them don't have actual numbers or like more intercalary interlude chapters kind of situation. And I reach another grace interlude, so I'm gonna say six and a half. But can I just say, James with all his cuteness is like he designed a house to make Cordelia feel at home spent so much time designing this home and giving her her own room that she can feel safe in in like a two, two weeks they've been fake married for two weeks and he buys her a present because they talked about all the traveling they want to do so he bought her a little globe that she can wear on her neck because it's the, it's the world he bought her the world and i just he, he truly has the herondale stupidity where he thinks that he is not loved by this person 
or he's not worthy to be loved by this person or whatever have you may because I just it's a lot it's a lot and I like teared up a couple times especially when he bought the fucking present oh my god he like bought the present and was like I have my vo voices voices I forgot what the word was it's getting late but yeah and I'm just like he man I don't. this is I don't even have words because it was just so cute and I'm like can someone buy me a globe when we're two weeks into our fake marriage and tell me that he bought me the world because we talked about it so much whatever um but I'm gonna go to bed I'm gonna pray that my whatever left of my curls stays and I can refresh it in the morning and yeah I'll update you guys tomorrow it is currently Wednesday y'all it's like Thursday morning and spring is here but we're gonna get snow in a couple days I think it's supposed to snow over the weekend but spring is here I like walked out and like the birds were tweeting um birds were tweeting things were happening I don't know the sun was shining like it's cold but it's not too cold and I'm just I'm a happy camper I'm not so happy about driving into the sun because it's probably where that's typically what happens when I'm driving to work is that I'm driving toward the sun but you know I'll take it over gloom and doom and depression so I'm just gonna sit in my car while it warms up and then head out to work and I'll catch you guys y'all during my lunch break about to go um, wash my face and get ready for bed and to read but I just need to be sad on main for a minute I don't know I'm like it so it's, it's pertaining to the movie Raya I've always been a little torn on it because it's very obvious that the creators or writers only did research on like three Southeast Asian c countries out of the multitude that's available to them three uh, um and to boot, out of all the mythical figures and creatures that are around Southeast Asia, they chose an East Asian imagery, which is the dragon. But on the other hand, I, in all of my almost 25 years of being alive, seeing a lack of my face in popular media, I, I get to see something in Raya. She she looks like me. She looks like the people that I grew up with. She looks like how I look when I'm a little darker. She has facial features and all that stuff. And the song that's featured in Raya, like the title song I believe, is sung by a Filipino songwriter. And then today, and I find out that the only voice actress that is Southeast Asian is Kelly Marie Tran, who is Vietnamese, and the original voice actress, who is Cassie Steele, who is a Filipino, was n to take it out of the role because her voice no longer fit the f fit Raya's character. But then she was never given a role in the movie afterward. And then to find out that the entirety of the cast is all East Asian, like I don't want to watch it because like what does that send that like. 
you can do the minimum research for Southeast Asian countries who don't get much representation at all to begin with. Slap it all in a movie and then to pour more salt on the wound of a lot of people who are looking forward to this movie who was hoping to see some version of themselves in it. They don't even get to see their faces in the cast. It's just kind of a slap in the face. It, it really is. Like, I don't know. And I'm trying very hard not to cry on camera because, um, I don't know. But it's, it's, a, it's a tough call to make, at least for me personally, because, like, I was so excited. Oh, I'm crying. Okay. I was just so excited because, like, I have a face. <laughs> I have a face and then in the future my kids will have a face or they'll have more faces but I don't want to watch it because of what I've said thus far oh my goodness I'm so sorry but if I don't watch it then like how does that say to the market as to how profitable Southeast Asian stories are or Southeast Asian story writers are going to be, and I just, man, my heart's just a little heavy tonight, but, um, on the bright side, <laughs> for the book, I made some progress when I was at lunch, I read quite a bit. Um, I kind of regret saying I tapped the book because I can't speed through the book as fast as I'd like to because I'm like focusing on the like, questions that I have or like comments that I have. I'm on page 176 in the middle of chapter, I think, 8? 9? One second. 8. And can I just say, Will, Will Herondale love him the fact that he like has to look at tessa and be like can i to find a demon and then the last thing for that chapter or that scene let me see if i can find it right here there we go as they rolled off into the night they passed will brandishing a seraph blade as he happily chased the wheel demon through the wentworth garden rose garden can you just imagine like adult like i'm assuming maybe like 40 year old late 30s early 40s will hair getting a little salt and peppery just happily running with a seraph blade chasing a demon and all tessa's in the background watching with like absolute love and adoration on her face <laughs> like is that anything like does that not just describe their entire relationship and then also the pantry I read that scene and I think I cried. Like I think I, the entire time I was just kind of reading and humming, that should be me. Cause I too would love to be pinned against the wall in a pantry by Anna Lightwood. I wanna marry Anna Lightwood. Aside from that, I'm starting to feel like, I feel bad for young Grace. I feel bad for young Grace and not so much old Grace. Cause I feel like old Grace by now has like some decency, some sense of right and wrong, some awareness of what she's doing, and young Grace is just very lonely and very depressed and has no one. Absolutely no one. So it's just like, Grace, be better. Be better. I don't know if I mentioned this, but I think on the third cover, it's probably going to be Grace. I have three options, which, but I think my first one makes the most sense. The first one's going to be Grace with her bracelet because that's the only thing that makes sense we have cordelia with her sword and then we have but yeah i think i'm gonna read for the rest of the night be a little sad over raya see what i can well i'm gonna wash my face first then i'm gonna read and be a little sad over raya but then it's bedtime and back to the office again tomorrow so i will catch up with you guys probably at the end of the night when i am about to go to bed Pardon the crazy kind of pineapple hair. Not really pineapple, but you know, we're trying. So James has been having ghastly dreams of all the murders from the Shadow Hunters that are going on. And like he says, he's like it feels like he's the one who's doing it. Um, all that fun stuff. But then he has like headaches and he's super tired all the time. I think, I think 
that somehow it's like how Tatiana um, possessed a footman or something in the first in the earlier chapters she is possessing James through the gracelet because Tatiana has made on has mentioned on more than one occasion how much she hates shadow hunters and wants to eradicate them all so why not do that with this through James but then it could also be like her possessing like Philomena who's like the new Italian shadow hunter that came to visit and James is seeing it because of his connection to the bracelet so my theory about Philomena being the one killing people out the window out the window you want to know why? because she just died hello it is now Friday morning um slight update on the curtain rod scenario <laughs> and it held for a little bit and I don't know what happened last night but it apparently fell overnight so guess feminism leaving my body did not really help in this scenario but he did tell me kind of what I need to do to make sure it is tight enough and I think I'm just gonna bring it down because it is holding up shoes on one end so it's very on that end heavy so I think what I'm gonna do is bring it down just a little bit lower and like have it so the bottom is like touching or like kind of sagging a little bit so that way it isn't all supported by the rod and if that doesn't work then I make adjustments in my closet and I bring the shoes back in there don't know exactly how I'm gonna do that but we're gonna figure that out tonight before I head over to my book as for the book I did read to like I think chapter 11 I have been Sarah sobbing since then. The fact that Cordelia and James have a code word in case like he starts to go in the shadow realm or the fact that Jesse and Lucy love each other which I don't think is gonna work out but we're not gonna get into that. It's just honestly so good. Like this is probably one of the- I say that this like with every Cassie book that I read but this is probably Cassie's one of like better works because you can tell she's starting to shift. Like her writing has definitely shifted from young adult to, to like adult like it's a little flowery like everything that she says has a purpose yeah i now i don't know who the killer is because philomena philomena has died and that was my only theory so i'm going back to my james theory we'll see about that and then we got to see how grace got her powers and kind of the manipulation that went behind it and like it, it makes me really sad for grace like i feel pity for her but not enough for present day grace because like Back then she didn't have a family so she kind of went with what she knew but now she's well she does not have a family so she's still very aware of what she's doing she knows what's good and what's right and wrong so like come on homegirl do better but i'm gonna head into work um right now <laughs>
Hey friends, it's Sunday. Um, I'm on chat. I haven't read. I didn't read my chapter last. I last updated you guys. I just kind of went straight to bed. Yeah, I I did quite a bit today. It's like 5:30. I want to say. Yeah, it's 5:30. And I've done quite a bit today. I uploaded a video. Did my taxes. Got my hairbrush and my pizza from my boyfriend's place that I left there yesterday. Washed my hair. It looks a little messy still, but like. We're really kind of getting somewhere with the texture, so like, I'm happy with it. And I played some Spider-Man for a couple hours, so that was, it's been a nice chill day. I did a lot, act. I don't know if I got as updated you on my Raya scenario. So my boyfriend ended up making me watch it yesterday morning. I was a little hesitant, but I think part of him was just kind of like, you know, I know she really needs this, you know, if she, she can judge this all she wants, but I think for her to like, she she needs to see some kind of rep on her from like the kid who didn't get any growing up so watch raya i actually did enjoy the storyline i like the message behind the idea that it's not groups of individuals that'll help harmonize the world and make it better but us as a whole unit by accepting like our differences our similarities and kind of our love for our own people i like that aspect i will call it for what it is though casting east asians to play southeast asians is a microaggression and then also not being very clear on which culture inspired it was inspired by which by which country slight microaggression as well i think i already had mentioned that i think ray is a filipina she has the same kind of similar structure as me as most filipinas i've seen actually um she fights she wears our hat our saddle Yes, I look good. And also fights with our martial arts techniques. I feel like I'm reiterating myself when I mention this, but my memory has just been so bad these past few days because it's just been kind of a whirlwind and mentally and emotionally exhausting. But I listened to the international version of the song that Jen Aiko sings. So good. It's so good. It's the Filipino version, and I cried. I historically sobbed for like the entirety of the song. Could not tell you what the song's about, but yeah. Um, I see my battery blinking, which means I gotta get off. But I'm gonna read a little bit more, and I'll catch up with you guys when I'm d getting there, when something happens. I haven't gotten that much farther than when I sent the thing, but I'm on my phone. Because my, my camera is charging, or my camera battery. I'm starting to think my Jesse theory of him being the killer is correct, because Anna, Anna? Anna mentions that the killer kills around dawn. And Jesse hangs out with Lucy for most of the night except for Dawn because he has to go back and, you know, he can't stay. So it's possible that he's killing people. I don't know how because he's a ghost and I don't know how he can hold something tangible. But, you know, I like to think I'm correct. And I just finished chapter 18. What can I say? James is probably the most stupid Herondale. See, even my cat is weird. He's just, it's so obvious that Matthew loves Cordelia. It's so obvious. And then he just won't take off the bracelet, even though it's a magic bracelet and he can't. Thomas telling Alistair that he, he was his secret. Oh man. He's biting. Okay, now you're looking at me because you know the camera's on you. You're trying to be cute. No, 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 no. Not James telling Cordelia that he can. She can. Tut. Tut. Touch him and do whatever she wanted. There's a storm. The institute is filling with seawater. I don't know what's going on. Um, yeah. They called it. Jesse was the killer. They called it. I called it. I called it. I think. He's the kid. Well, he has runes now. He hasn't had runes before. I 
I'm gonna take this win for the moment. Called it. Called it. I look like crazy person right now, but I called it. Proud of myself. Jesse was Jesse was being possessed by Belial. Alrighty, it is Monday. About ten fifty. I'm working from home today. So I'm back in the office tomorrow. I didn't get a chance to finish Chain of Iron last night. I was too tired. But I'm on chapter 26, so I have about like 100 pages left. So I'm going to finish it for lunch today. And then I can wrap up this vlog. <laughs> Not that I haven't enjoyed vlogging. But you know, it's still. But it's been a rough weekend. My hair looks like a mess, but I swear it looks cute. It's just, she got caught in my sunglasses and we lost some definition. I think I've updated you guys pretty much on all what I know. Basically, I was right. Jesse was the killer. No one can take that from me. No one. No, apparently Lilith tricked Cordelia and now she's a paladin. And Cortana's been messed up. And she's a paladin for Lilith and not Wayland. And it's poor thing. The poor thing's going through it. There are 100 pages left and I'm kind of scared. I'm very scared. I'm terrified. So I'll catch up with you guys on my lunch, which is like in about two hours. Uh, yeah, two hours. And we'll see how far I get. Alrighty, slight update. I just finished filming. I did read a little bit, quite a bit for lunch. So none of y'all were gonna tell me that Tatiana was gonna try to do some weird incesty thing? Like Cassia, I love you. I do. I truly love your writing. Love the way that you write representation and diversity in your books. A1 plus one, good to go. But um, why are you so in love with the idea of incest. Like, we get it, we're trying to show that Tatiana is like the psycho person who is willing to like step on everyone else to get the things she wants done. There are other ways to show she's psycho other than pushing incest. Cassie, okay, there's other ways. And also, can we talk about the fact that James is sitting here talking about how he loves Cordelia and how he wants to make this marriage like an actual marriage and just continue on and love each other but he severely screwed up with Grace severely screwed up with Grace and instead of being a front and telling Cordelia right away about his feelings for Cordelia now that he's aware of them he kind of aggressively answers back that he has not loved Grace the same way that he has loved Cordelia. Which can be very misconstrued when you're in a very emotional state like Cordelia is right now. And then to boot, Cordelia comes in and hugs him. And I feel like Cordelia probably, like Grace comes in and hugs him. And I feel like Cordelia probably saw and it's just going to get worse from here. And apparently... J James has inherited a lot of things from his father and the previous Harrodales before him except for his ability to, to use to be um, silver-tongued and yeah it's just it gives me a headache so instead of continuing to read I'm actually gonna go hop in the shower really quickly and then take I'm gonna put all my books away first and all my equipment away and then I'm going to hop in the shower we're gonna take a shower we're gonna pull out the book and I'm gonna read the last like two chapters and we're gonna cry. That's what's gonna happen and
multiple hours or a few hours of kind of calming the emotions down of calming my emotions down and really getting a grip on what I thought about the book five out of five stars I think in terms of the problems that I had with Gina Gold primarily with the world building it wrapped it up quite nicely it kind of tied everything in together and I think I, I still do stand by what I said that this will not be a book that you can read first glance that you can start off because it will ruin the rest of the series for you because it hints he very heavily on the other series but it was it was wonderful I think the second book was definitely a bit more character driven we got to see them all kind of stuck in their head a bit more and really question who they are and who they want to be and their motivations and their values we also got to see, like like I said, more characters that we didn't think we would end up seeing, primarily from Grace's perspective. We got to see her idea of why she's doing the things she's doing, and more so that she's doing things out of a sign of desperation, out of habit, despite the fact that she is well aware that these are things that she should not be doing. These are terrible things, and it's horrible, and she's causing people a lot of grief. Um, I think I feel pity for her to be stuck in such a horrible situation, but I don't feel enough to feel like she is worthy of any kind of attention as a character. She just... She gotta go. And I don't know how Cassie can redeem her in the last book unless she pulls like a Darth Vader kind of situation and she dies in the last bit. I have a feeling that Grace and Kit will end up together or have some romantic interest in each other primarily because of the interaction that they had where Grace was very much involved in what Kit was saying and Kit was reciprocating it and he was very happy that the fact that someone wasn't bored to tears at the things he was saying which makes me kind of sad because he's a precious little boy. I've also decided that James is the master of just not communicating well and that's coming from both from having seen both Jace and Will who are like the kings of like just not vo vocalizing but at least with Jace and Will, they're aware of the things that they're saying and how things are conveyed, which is why they're so good at not communicating very well, because they can just manipulate situations. But I do feel really bad for him because he has been living under a literal bubble for the past, like, what, three and a half years? And now that he's coming out of it, he's finding that because he could not get out of this bubble so quickly or that he wasn't strong enough to fight it, he is losing a lot of people that he cares about. Cordelia and Matthew are now off to Paris with a potential budding romance, which like, I want to see how that pans out, but I feel like it's too late in this trilogy for us to really enjoy and appreciate anything budding between the two of them. I think it's going to cause a lot of heartbreak. Cordelia is going to end up falling for Matthew for all the wrong reasons, and Matthew is going to do something that's going to remind Cordelia of her father because of his alcoholism, and then things will spiral and... They will both decide that it's for the better after much heartbreak. So I kind of really have TBH. I feel like a lot of my other situations with like with Thomas and Alistair will definitely get wrapped up in the last book. Kind of has to be. Anna and Ariadne. I think that like while I like the idea of the two of them together, I think with how much pain Ariadne's, Ariadne has caused Anna in the past and kind of caused Anna to close up, I think in that situation it might be better if they just ended things instead of continuing to entertain a possibility which gets Ariadne's hopes up and then which gets Aunt Anna to close up quite quickly as we have seen. Um, with Thomas and Alistair I think they're gonna end up together. I think 
I think while Alistair may want to be more drawn to Charles because of their past and their history, I think that overall Thomas is a better choice for him. I think Thomas provides a sense of stability and sh a sh like a surety, that's a word, sure, that Charles does not want to offer. And a level of acceptance that I think Charles does not give Alistair. With Cordelia being a paladin for Lilith, I kind I'm excited to see how that's going to end up in the last book just because it's a huge plot hole it's a plot plot hole it's a huge plot twist and it'll be interesting to see how this will evolve and how it'll grow and change and how it'll change cordelia overall as a person and i think partially it's why she's drawn it's partially why she's drawn to matthew as well because matthew does have this guilt and this overriding kind of self-hatred that cordelia can kind of empathize with and she it's it's solace whereas James has been very much closed off in so many levels, so it'll be very interesting to see. I'm also, I'm also wondering if Lucy is dead, because she like commanded him to like come back to life, and then she fell asleep. And Malcolm had mentioned that she like in order for you to bring someone back to life, you have to give something of equal. So I'm, I'm wondering if that's her. But yeah, that is it for my thoughts on Chain of Iron by Cassandra Clare. I loved it. I loved it as usual. Be sure to keep an eye out in the next coming weeks for more Shadowhunter slash Last Hours content. I have a couple of ideas planned out that I would like to do because I am just trash. But until next time, hit like, subscribe, comment, and I'll talk to you guys in my next video. Yeah, I'm super excited for this series and I will wrap up more of my thoughts probably in my wrap up as one does. And yeah, until next time, I hope hopefully you guys have been having a great week. If not, hopefully the rest of the week goes very well for you guys. But until my next video, Follow me on my social media, comment below for more discuss discussions, and I will talk to you guys in my next one. Bye!